Jesus, there is an anointing in this place. Access. Uh, God is a, in, in the book of Genesis, and it's amazing yesterday when I was here for the entire conference, and uh, we started to talk about Genesis. All the preachers spoke about the book of Genesis. And I was saying, God, we're talking about access. Why did you bring me to Genesis at home? We did not speak. And he told me that this is what I want to talk about. Isn't God good? That's what the scripture says, and God said, let us make man in our own image according to our likeness. And let them have, everybody say, dominion. dominion. Over the fish of the sea and over the bird of the air and over every cattle and over uh, all the ends of the all the earth and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Say that I have dominion over every creature except the human person. You have no dominion over a human being. You only have dominion over animals, cats and dogs and not over God's God's man or woman. Genesis 8, 28. I'm going to read this quickly. Genesis 28, verse 10. And Jacob went out from Beersheba. I actually looked this morning. Beersheba is right in the middle of Israel. I just said, where is Beersheba? You know, right in Israel. And went towards Aram. And he lightened up on a certain place and uh, tarried there all night. Because the sun was set and he took the stone of that place and put them for a, his pillows and lay down in that place to sleep. And he dreamed, everybody said dreamed. And behold, a ladder set up on the earth and the top of it reached heaven. And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it. And said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, my fa thy father, the God of Isaac, the land whereupon thou liest, to thee will I give it and to thy seed. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. And in thee and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And behold, I am with thee. Everybody say, I am with thee. And I will keep thee in all places whither thou goest and bring thee again into this land. For I, uh, I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. And Jacob awoke out of his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place and I knew it not. And he was afraid and says, How dreadful is this place. This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. Everybody say access. Everybody say access. There are some terms, I can't get into all of it, but there's terms like gates and portals. Have you ever heard about those terms? Amen. There was, when uh, Jacob saw this vision, he actually went into a portal, an opening, an opening. The heavens was open. Amen. And then look on how the scripture described uh, in verse 12. And he dreamt and a ladder sat on the earth. Okay, was placed on the earth. And, uh, and it reached to the top. In other words, you know how a ladder is, right? Just, just uh, uh, visualize the ladder, right? It has to have a footing and it has something to rest on. Now... God allowed him to see this ladder, right? Having access from earth to heaven. I looked at the descension of the angels. It wasn't coming from descending to ascending. It went from ascending to descending. And I'm saying, God, the angels are down here. I said, the angels are down here. <laughs> and who was at the very top? God himself stood there and says, I am the head honcho 
are here. I am king. I am God. Uh, let us therefore come bold. Everybody say, let us therefore come boldly into the throne of grace that we may obtain grace and, uh, and find grace to help in time of need. Everybody say boldly. We get access to come boldly. Everybody say boldly. boldly. Ephesians chapter 2, and I'm gonna, uh, this is the, uh, the American Standard Bible, and it says uh, Ephesians 2, 4 through 7, and God being rich in mercy because of his great love which he loved us even when we were dead in our trespasses made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up with him and seated us with him in heavenly places in Christ Jesus so that in the ages to come he might show the come surpassing riches of his grace in kindness towards us in Jesus Christ. I'm reading these scriptures to let us know where we are. Right now we are in Macedonia Baptist Church, but we are not. We are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. We have Access. Everybody say access. Everybody say access. The dream did not take the ladder away. We still have access. Somebody say access. Somebody say access. Access. To come to. Everybody say to come to. A way of approach. Entrance. This is the etymology of the word I actually looked up. Habit or power of getting into the presence of someone or something. And this is not the Greek or the Hebrew. This is just etymology. This is just the original, the root of the word. And it says habit or the power of getting into the presence. Everybody said a habit to get into the presence of God. It has to become something that we do habitually to get all the stuff that you're going to get from God. It is not a one year thing. It's going to be a daily walk with God. Bold means stout heart. Now, I did not say, this is not talking about being uh, proud now. When you come to God, come to God with stoutness. Understanding that he's God and when you come before him, you're not going to chicken out. You're going to come before him knowing that it's not you who is standing before him. It is he who is standing before him through you. That's why you need the baptism of the Holy Ghost because you cannot get access into the presence of God as a human being. The only way we have access is through the baptism of the Holy Ghost. So when you go in there, forget about your timidity. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with be unto him and listen, the only way you're going to learn is to repeat. Everybody say, repeat after me. Enter into his gate with thanksgiving that means your mouth have to be open you cannot go to god with your mouth shut everybody say access it requires courage somebody say courage can't get into it. now i look on the uh to have access level sister flo talked about it a little bit 
uh, on a computer system and when you talk about access level, it says part of the access control procedure for computer system, which allow a system administrator to set up a hierarchy of users. Thus, the low level users can access only a limited set of information. Whereas the highest level users can access the most sensitive data in the system also called access rights i worked into the banking system for many years and i had uh you know as a trainer i had um full access to the entire training database when i had my uh, uh trainees come in to do system training i only give them you know, if they were just, let's say, a teller, they will not have teller access. We set them up for only teller access. But then, if they're going to uh, do any transaction, let's say over $5,000, you're going to need supervisor access. Supervisor now has about two more levels up. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Then at the manager's level, we still have the ability to overcome, to, to override at least $100,000. And then you have the VP rights up to a million dollars. And then when you get to the CEO level, it's unlimited access. None of us in here is better than the other if you have the baptism of the Holy Ghost. We have unlimited access. Do not hold yourself back and put yourself down to say, well, I am just a little me and I am not like Sister Margaret and I'm not like Sister Flo and I'm not like Sister Lisa and I could never walk in that. That's baloney. Absolutely nothing like that. You have the baptism of the Holy Ghost and you have full access. the Holy Ghost that's inside of you. Somebody say, activate him! I am very strategic in my voice and in my speaking because the Lord rebuked me. Don't you ever call. He said, don't you ever call me it. I receive it. That's the reason why a lot of people are having problems because they receive it and not him. Ah! The Holy Ghost is no it. I receive him. I receive God Almighty. I receive everything that pertains to righteousness and godliness. That means I have access. Somebody say access. That's why you shall lay hands on the sick. And they shall. Everybody say access. If you have the Holy Ghost, you have the same rights. Administratively. Everybody say administratively. You would need a title as a pastor for administrative duties with the state of New York and your county to do business. I'm going somewhere with this. So don't tell me that you need a pastoral uh, administrative access to lay hands on the sick. That's not what the Bible says. Those, those, this sign, these signs shall follow them that. Are you a believer? Are you a believer? Don't mix up administrative access with your access. The overarching theme of computer system, it point at which, uh, the, I'm, I'm not going to go into that. I, I was going to do a little technical here. But I, I get crazy sometimes to details. Dominion, let's go back to the scripture, right? Dominion, dominion. Everybody say dominion. dominion. You have dominion. The word translated here is, uh, ma, obviously I'm not Hebrew. There it is. It's up there. Hallelujah. <laughs> it means sovereign rule. <laughs> And royal power. Somebody.
Somebody say, sovereign rule and royal power. This is not a man-made dominion that you got. This is not a dominion that you got from your boss. This dominion came from God. You got royal power and sovereign rule to dominate. Mankind was created to have rulership over the earth. Oh my God. I have a revelation. I come to church, the building, but I've graduated into the kingdom. When you are in the kingdom, you can operate at any access. If you only have pigeonholed yourself into church, then you cannot do anything outside of church. But when you get into the kingdom, you can ad um, administer and demonstrate what God has called you to do. Don't get it mixed up. The kingdom is inside of you. That's what the Bible says. Come on. You have royal access. Hold on. This, this is going to blow my mind. It's going to blow your mind because it blow my mind. Forget it. I'm, I'm blown up. But my mind is totally blown. Uh, the creation of man. And the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the earth and breathed into his nostril the breath of life. And man became a living soul. Who breathed, breathed into your nostril? God. Everybody say God. God. All right. <laughs> now, you have to read this. Go back and read Genesis because this is going to blow your mind. I looked at him critically. I'm a critical thinker. Planting of the garden. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. God, the property of God place is known as Eden. Everything was made outside of Eden. Not or on the property of God, but not in the garden. Go back. I can't do it. You're gonna, that's your homework. After God created man outside, he said, okay, I am going to do an experiment. I am not going to plant a garden eastward on my property. And I am going to take man and I'm going to put him in the garden. Watch God. Hallelujah. And he said, in there, I only have two things I want you to do. Everybody said two things. Somebody said two things. Out of the ground, pleasant for the eye, food. Two, two trees were in there and you're going to lose. You're going to realize that one of that tree is not in Revelation. Go and do your homework. Okay. One was pleasant to look for and one was good. Uh, next verse. And God took the man and put him in the garden to dress it and to keep it. Everybody say it, to dress it and to keep it. I say it again, to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded man saying, Of every tree of the garden thou must eat, eat freely, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt eat. Thou shalt not eat of it. For the day thou eatest thereof, thou shalt die. In other words, that's a whole Greek. It's crazy. In other words, there's a tree up there. Don't touch it. Don't, don't, not, not, touch, not touch, but don't eat of it. Okay. Dress. The Hebrew word for dress there is abad. Everybody say abad. It has two meanings. It means to work. Which means labor, use your muscle, occupy, cultivate, and produce in the garden. Not outside of the garden, in the garden. We did not know what thorns and thistles were. That's after sin. God had his, let's just, just think for a minute. He has his rose garden. He was the first one that actually made a huge garden. The garden was so big that a river come out of Eden. 
and broke into four heads to water his garden. One of them had gold. The Bible said it was good gold. Going to Revelation is the same one that we're going to be walking on. The next thing to dress means to serve. Everybody say serve. Everybody say serve. To worship, to adore, be present for service to the master. To dress. That is the meaning of dress. So Adam's responsibility was to make sure that when the leaves drop off the rose petals, he would be in there to just take it up and, you know, clean up the garden. That's all he had to do. That when God come down in the cool of the day to talk to him, he wouldn't have leaves and shrubs there. God come into his garden and says, boy, come over here, let's talk. And when uh, Adam saw him, he came in ready to worship. I worship you. I adore you. I appreciate you. So every morning, the voice of God. The Bible says the voice of God walked into the garden. Read that. It's there. It wasn't just present. It was his voice. He heard his voice. Walking. His voice was walking in the garden. And when he heard it, Adam's responsibility meant no, no dirt must be in there. When you come in there, address me. Address me. King of kings. Lord of lords. Conquer and line of the, the healer. Deliver. Do you understand what I'm talking about? I'm just undressed. When you get into the presence of God and get access, know how to address God. Know how to dress him. The next one. God, the time. The next one is to keep. To keep is shamar. Everybody say shamar. This one means to watch, to give security, to be a bodyguard, to be a watchman, to pay attention. Two things he had to do. Dress and watch. There is a reason he said I have two things in here I do not want to have any problems with. The tree of life and the tree of knowledge, good and evil. In other words, don't let anybody into this garden. Don't let the devil in here. In the process of worship, God gave him a gift. God said to him, it's not good for a man to be alone. And God gave him a gift. Out of the garden again and brought her to him. Bring the gift to him. He named her. So we had two people now in there. He was supposed to dress it and keep it. He got preoccupied by his gift. And forgot that he had two mandates from God. To dress it and to keep it he was supposed to keep the way to the tree of life remember angel satan was created before the heavens and the earth were created right satan or serpent actually means seraph he was an angel he was a seraph so just like this, the boy here saw that angel this morning. The reason why, number one, why all of us know about angels is because in our DNA, that's who we used to play with. Heaven, the reason I say, look at the end. When they got kicked out of the garden, an angel, 
a cherubim was placed at the gate. We know them in our DNA. We know them. If you don't know them, you have the baptism of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is very God. So they minister to God. So the Holy Ghost know angels. So in your natural DNA, you knew angels. And now with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you're acquainted with them. Because they are worshipping the Holy Ghost that's inside of you. <laughs> ah! Your responsibility is to stay and allow nobody in the garden. Don't allow anybody to come into the garden. Don't allow anybody to come in or anything to stop you from worshiping and keeping. And those of you who are prayer warriors, you are, uh, uh, you are placed upon the wall to watch. You're there to preserve the way, maintain your original ex and existing state of the garden. Man was made outside of the garden. The garden was a place of tranquility. Adam allowed the wild beast to enter the garden. No filth should have been in there. One time God was going to um, visit Israel. And he said, when I come, I'm giving you a three-day notice. When I come there, make sure there's no filth in there. God doesn't deal with filth. That's the reason why he did not allow the beast to be in the field. In the garden. Don't allow wild things into the garden, into the presence of God with you. Keep it at bay. Adam was mandated to make sure that if no, nothing enters the gate of the garden. Adam became preoccupied with a gift, his wife. You have been given gifts. Don't allow the ability to preach, the ability to teach, the ability to prophesy, the ability to lay hands on the sick. And because you can't do stuff, you get preoccupied with the gift and I get preoccupied with the giver of the gift. His gift. Let him disrespect God. When God came down and says, Adam, where are thou? Adam was rude. Adam said, the gift you gave me. You gave me a defective product. If you knew that this gift would have kept me and made me do sin, you wouldn't have put her in there. You are the one that gave me a defective product. And Lord, show it to me when you use one of the uh, parables of the, the talents. And he gave the one man one talent. He was rude. Very rude. He said, you know. that I wouldn't do anything with it. In other words. Why did you give it to me? Because of that he was cast out. Go and read it. Don't allow your gift. To stop your access. Also look at this. I'm jumping. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle. It does not make sense. A serpent is not a part of the cattle stuff. A serpent is a reptile. Not a beast. And above every beast of the field, upon your belly thou shalt go and thou shalt thou eat. In other words, when the serpent went in there, he went in there with feet. Scientifically, a serpent does have hip bones. They find that they actually have hip bones and shoulder bones that is within their DNA. They stop eating grass and start eating the thing you are made of. Dust. That's why you have dominion over them. I tell you, God says, hey, you, I know you're eating dust. You're eating rottenness. You're eating flesh. 
can't get into all of this because I have to run. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed. And it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. Of course, that's talking about Jesus Christ. But it's also talking about you. Because we still have inside of us the Holy Ghost, which is very God. Don't settle for dirt when God has given you dominion. Don't settle just to stay on the periphery. Deep, call it unto deep. Get out into the deep waters. Get out into the deep places. God wants to show you visions and revelations of himself. It is in you if you have the Holy Ghost. Ask yourself, do you really receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost? If you don't get him. The Holy Ghost is not timid. Stop allowing your flesh to rule the Holy Ghost. And says, well, I'm too timid. No, allow the Holy Ghost that's inside of you to take authority over your flesh. God has given you dominion. Two things you have given. What are they? To dress and to keep. What does dress mean? To serve and to worship. To work it. Have access. We can create our own garden of Eden. No, we know that God Almighty is on the inside of us. Create the place where God can come in. And find a rest in place. That he can talk to you. That he can show you visions and revelations. It's not regulated to just a few of us. It's for every last one of us who have received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Let me tell you this. All of the giftings. Say all of the giftings, both administratively, uh, everything that pertained to life and godliness was deposited in you in the Holy Ghost. So you're saying, well, God, I want to reach up there. He's saying, hello, I am in here. When you receive the Holy Ghost, how many of you have Microsoft Office? Raise your hand. Almost every operating system of a computer, as you have to buy the access, if you don't have full access, you have to get there, right? When you buy the office, you get all of the programs, and it's downloaded on your computer. How many know that there is uh, one of the programs known as access? How many of you can uh, and, and have ever accessed access? On your Microsoft. And if you have Mac, because I have a Mac too. It, it, did you know that it was on your hard drive? Saying this to say that. Did you know that pastor is on your hard drive? Apostle is on your hard drive. Prophet is on your hard drive. Teacher is on your hard drive. Miracles is on your hard drive. It's already in the imprint. Of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. is not going to come from yon. It's just going to. When you accept it and open up. You're just going to now turn on the access button. Boom. And it says oh my God. I got a revelation last night. It didn't come from anywhere. Once you had the Holy Ghost 15, 20, 30, 100 years ago. It was always in you. But now that you have now gone to the next level. You get another access. It was already on your hard drive. He is already in you. Stop holding back yourself. God. It's great that we, you, we, you want us to lay hands upon you. Take your own hands. Raise it up right now. Take your own hands. Holy Ghost hands. Say so this hand now has the 
baptism of the Holy Ghost. Touch on your body. Your body where the sickness is. And activate him. Say this dirty hand can't do it. But I now allow you to take over my hand. And wherever the sickness is. Touch it. And command it to get out of your body. Command it to get out of your family. Command your finances to work. Come on. He is in you. You don't need Sister Flo to lay hands upon you. You don't need Bishop to lay hands upon you. You have him. And if you don't get him. You have royal access. You are a king's kid. Not bashing anybody, but any leader that tell you that they they have to lay hands upon you, run. They have to do everything for you, run. It's not scriptural. It's not. That's manipulation and control. A lot of our pastors are dying because they, it has not been revealed to them that they don't have to do it. I access your own Holy Ghost. into your garden and you will have access uh, to keep and to dress your garden God wants you to keep and to dress your garden I said God wants to keep and to dress your garden second Adam came and destroyed what first Adam did so now we can come Boldly. Some of us are still living that oh Jesus we got kicked out of heaven and we will never be able to in the name of Jesus not under this new covenant you have power you have authority you can do exactly what Adam did and more. Yes. Somebody say access. Stand on your feet. Lift up both hands up and say, God, I thank you for granting me access. 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 Shakataya labakasata. Open up your mouth and speak in tongues as the Spirit give you utterance. You have access. Stop one minute. God just show me. Some of you are lazy. I curse that spirit of laziness right now. I break it. It is the same serpentile mentality. You're lazy to get into the presence of God. You're lazy. You're not lazy to get up to go to work. You're not lazy to do what you want to do. But when you come into the presence of God, you're lazy to worship. You're lazy to lift your hands. You shut your mouth. And then why only brother Bertram must pray people true he has the Holy Ghost you have the Holy Ghost some people after they get the Holy Ghost they just sit down and they don't do I rebuild that spirit of laziness God wants to do something great in this here city
being disrespectful. Don't have a license and just sit on it. Come on. There is field. There are preaching points. There are so many places in New York City that needs to be reached. It's not just to get the gift and put it on the wall. I said, I have a license. Come on. Work your license. Do something with it and turn it in. Dress it. And everybody say, dress it. That means work, worship, and guard it. Work, worship, guard it. Say, work, worship, guard. Again, work, worship, guard. Again, work, worship, guard. One more time. Worship. You have access. You have access. The serpent is a no good underprivileged Philistine and I rebuke him in Jesus name. A lot of us don't like to curse the devil. Oh, you mustn't do that. Then he's going to just sit right at your feet and don't allow you to work, worship, or guard it. Because he's in your garden. We're going right back in the garden of God. You're, you're going to keep standing. Because we're going to go to our next. You go back into Revelation. Read Revelation. Again. Search it. We have to search the scriptures. I love my pastor to death. And he knows me and so I can speak. I'm not going to just take what he says. Ukline and sinker. No. It's your right to search the scriptures. Take notes, listen, go home and search it out. And apply it. I'm not against pastors. 36 years I with my pastor. So I'm just simply saying to us, Bridget, don't just sit down and just, when you're waiting on somebody, take your Bible, dust it off. And start reading it. Because when I look in Revelation, the same street that I'm going to walk on is the same street that was in the Eden of God. The tree of life is still there. The tree of knowledge and good and evil no need to be existed anymore because the Bible says you are now become a part of us. Knowing good and evil. So I don't need to guard it. But all I need is to guard is the tree of life. We are going back in the Eden of God. And God is holding us responsible. This day. He's giving us another chance. He's calling you individual as Adam and Eve go back to the garden dress it and keep it when you start doing that you're going to see signs wonders and miracles I have some prayer points here I can't even go we're royal priests what's a royal priestess holy nation peculiar people ambassadors an ambassador cannot be a person who is here right now if I'm in the United States and I am an ambassador of the United States I, my, my whole duty of ambassadorship cease the only time I can be an ambassador is when I go to Jamaica then I bring America there and says I represent America as soon as I get back on American Airlines and put down, then the Congress and all those other guys is responsible. But you have been labeled an ambassador of Christ. That means everywhere you go, you are representing the kingdom. And you have all of the legal rights of a king's kid to operate.
operate in kingdom dominion. Stop acting like as though you're some, you're God's neighbor. You're a child. And not just that, you have been designated as an ambassador. An ambassador does everything with the seal of the America, using the American seal. Wherever country you come from. Well, we have that. He says, these signs shall follow them that believe who is an ambassador. You shall lay hands unto the sick. You shall take up serpent. You shall speak with new tongues. New tongues, let me tell you something. That's another revelation. Hey, he just gave me another click. New tongues is not just speaking in other tongues. He didn't say speaking in other tongues. It says new tongues. You're going to get the Holy Ghost, which is an unknown tongue to worship. But then you're going to get a new tongue. You don't talk the tongue that you used to talk before you came into the church. Oh, I can't double click on that. But there's so much in that. Search that out. Take up serpent. I told you that last year, right? At our church. What does take up serpent mean? Take up your fears. Take up your fears, whatever it is that you're afraid of. Take it up and lift it up. As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so. You have power to take up your fears. Your kingdom citizen. The king has sovereign rights. He's lord, he's master, he's ruler. He's the only potentate. <laughs> Uh, the restoration, this is Revelation uh, 22, uh, 1 through 5, and it says, And the angel showed me the river of water of life, clear as crystal, fall, uh, flowing from the throne. Read with me, if you can see it. And of the Lamb, uh, down in the middle of the great street of the city. <laughs> this is the NIV. On each side of the river stood the tree of life, bearing 12 crops of fruits yielding its fruit every month and the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nation no longer will there be any curse <laughs> the throne of God and of the lamb will be in the city and his servants will serve him that means me and you they will see his face and his names will be in their forehead there will be no more night there will not be need of the light of the lamp or the light of the sun. For the Lord God will give them light and they will reign with him forever. And so I had to look at it because there's only the tree of life is in there. There is no tree of knowledge and good because it's already uh, eaten. We already know everything is now open to us. So we're going back. The cherubims are now there guarding but we have access because we have him on the inside. No angels, I told you, every one of you in here, no angels. If you don't know him, he who is inside of you, they are worshiping him. So angels are around you 24-7. It shouldn't be a phenomenon or a phenomena whenever an angel comes in the room and says, Oh my God, there's an angel here. If you don't have, if you have the Holy Ghost, he has been with you all the time because you cannot get out of your house or move anywhere without being, having angelic protection. There is a battalion of angels that come with you every single day because of not who you are, but because of who you're carrying. So this place is loaded with angels. So when I look at sunset, he saw the angel. I believe him because my angel is here. Your angel is here. Yeah, yes. I have a mentality. Walk in Eden mentality. You were formed in the image of God. You were given authority. You were placed in the garden of God. In the paradise of God. You have been given promises. Hallelujah. And although we were expelled, but now we have him on the inside. We never lose our dominion power over Satan. God has paid the price for sin. We can walk in apostolic authority. God has given us access to the holies of holies. God sanctum sanctorium. Prayer points. Jesus. Pray that. Become obedient 
the will of God. Everybody say, God, I submit myself to you. Hold on a minute. You're going to say it quietly now. Because he's not out there. He's in you. So I want you to kind of turn inside and say, Dad, activate yourself in me. I submit myself to your authority. Don't wait for God to come. He's in you. Follow the mandate of God that he's telling you to do. Some of you have been told, go lay hands on the sick. All for these three days, go and pray for that person. But no, God, in the name of Jesus. You know, people leave here not being delivered because you were disobedient to God. Well, it's not me. It's not you and you can't save a fly. You can't heal nobody. So when God tells you to do something, go and do it. Because you can't do it. Just move. And you don't have to make a big thing. All to, you know, people there, you have to swirl and say, no, 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 no. No, just go over there and just, in the name of Jesus, and pass. He doesn't need your voice. He just needs you to be a big. The three guys who were leprous, they didn't do anything. They just obeyed. And as soon as they moved one foot to another, they heard thunder. They heard lightning. And the entire place, their own place ran away. Obey God. Follow the mandate of God. Follow the leadership of God. If you follow God, you won't have a problem following your pastor. Follow the leadership of God that God has set over you. Get your eyes and your mind on the discernment to know the voice of God and the voice of the enemy. Don't tell me that you don't know God and you don't know the devil. The devil will never tell you to go pray for somebody. The devil will never tell you to fast. So don't, don't call me and say, Sister Margaret, I had, I had this premonition this morning. He said, God, for me to fast. Yes! Say God fast. <laughs> Believe in who you are and walk in that honor and glory. Listen to me. Walk in the honor. Walk between the fire of God. Walk in the coal of God. 